welcome to our beautiful program the um, new life plan that we've been working on for the past 27 days um now the 27 days haven't been tied to each other is he hasn't been back to back and the reason is because of administrative processes um we have to finish uh, um, editing the program and you know and then putting it on and creating time to sit down and put it all together and reading the book and so it's been really really hectic but yes we today's our 28th day and this is the book we've been working with the purpose driven life this is an amazing book um i don't know how else to talk about this but you know it feels like you know when you're pregnant and you don't you don't know what child you're going to have if it's going to be a boy or if it's going to be a girl or that's how it feels like for me it's my first time of reading this book i don't know what i'm seeing in the next chapter i don't know what it's going to talk about and so i'm always in anticipation and I, I just can't wait to to read the next chapter to see what it's going to be all about and this chapter i'm going to be talking about today is so exciting just like the rest of them so if you have the time and the money take your time buy this it's on amazon this person doesn't even know I'm reading this book, but I am so happy to read it because it's made a huge change to my understanding of life. And this was something I was struggling with for so long. You know, when you're at that stage where you've done most things and it's still not getting you the results you were thinking you'll get. And then you just start wondering what next, what next. I have been there. That's where I've been. And uh, a voice came, which I'm sure is the voice of God, Spirit, the, the, the Holy Spirit telling me, go and read this book. I bought this a long time ago. Someone recommended it to me. And I just read one chapter and I dropped it. But he said, go and read this book. And I took it on. And this is where we are. I'll practically say it's really changed everything that I've thought about life. And I can also say it saved my life because who knows where I would have been heading anyway so let's get on with this today is day 28 and chapter 28 and it's equally as exciting as the other chapters like i said and we're going to delve straight into it um welcome on board if you are on instagram and you're live with us um but i've been having second thoughts should i continue the instagram live because i'm not getting any feedback from anybody but again we just keep watching um people on youtube we're absolutely excited that you are there and you're listening and you're watching and you're making comments uh one of my really great friends on youtube is brenda and brenda thank you so much because one of the things you said in i think the last chapter was yes you did buy this book yourself and you never really had time to read it oh yes you did you did read it but now that i've reviewed it it's really giving you a different meaning to the book and i'm so happy that you came up with that because um that's the kind of thing i wanted to hear from people am i making sense is this is this adding up or is it just me in my usual way just ready to throw things out at people i love to share and i'll keep sharing but like i always say to people if i share and the people i'm sharing too are not getting anything out of it then is it what me doing it so that's where we are so thanks a lot brenda for coming out with that comment i'm really happy you you're seeing value out of this and I'm sure there are so many other people out there who are seeing value but really don't feel like talking. It does help when you talk because when you talk, it reminds me that I'm doing something useful and I'm contributing. I mean, no matter how small the way I am contributing, I'm contributing to making your life a lot lighter as well. Which is the reason I do most of the things I do, to make life lighter and bearable for all of us. Because remember, we are all visitors on this earth and... We don't know what it is we we're sent here for and so if we can travel this journey light i think i would say my mission is done but anyway let's carry on so the title of this chapter it says it takes time that's what the title says it takes time now you know he gives us two verses before we go straight into it i'm sure that god who began the good work within you will keep right on helping you grow in his grace until his tax within you is finally finished on that day when Jesus returns. So this touched me as well until his tax is finally finished. So he's going to keep carrying on until his tax is finally finished. 
and it makes me wonder is it that again some of us we pass through a really short time and it's done and some of us will pass through a really long time and we're still there so i don't know if those of us who, who live really quickly our taxes finish within that time or those of us who are still carrying on even if we're doing nothing god is still expecting us to bring out the tax that he's given us i don't know but things like this make us think until the tax is finally finished and on that day when jesus christ will return so this is what we're now pushing it all the way to eternity but for me it's first dealing with now our time here so the next one is everything on earth has its own time and its own season this is ecclesiastes um chapter 3 verse 1 the first one was philippians um chapter 1 verse 6 so those are the two verses he wants us to ponder on so let's go into it there are no shortcuts to maturity now we're trying to mature in life says there are no shortcuts to it because lots of us think i mean i did a video recently um on makeup and i was saying video for older skin and um my husband was saying video for matured women and i was thinking maturity even people who are young some of them are so matured you'll be wondering where did they learn all that and so maturity is something that takes time to achieve it comes down to your willingness to do it it's not something that happens automatically because years have been adding on in your life and so you find people who might be 50 60 70 still acting like babies when people who are like 30 20 are already matured i mean we've just heard about the person who's won the uh, 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 France election he's a young man of and someone did a a, com, a, a compilation of um the presidents and i can't remember which country but this country this president of this country is going to go and visit this new young president of france and he is like this boy is like his great grandson or his grandson now what's that got to do with age so that's where we are maturity is something that you allow to happen to you so it takes years for us to grow to adulthood and it takes a full season for fruit to mature and ripen. So the message here is, you know, he, he tends to find us examples that we can relate to. Think of a mango tree, think of an apple tree, think of whatever three, uh, tree. These fruits take time to grow and then produce the fruit. And then it takes time for the fruit to mature and ripen. Avocado is a very good one. Um, because my sister has a huge tree of it in her garden. And I love avocado really well. And I keep saying to her, oh, I can't wait for it. And she says it takes time for these fruits to come. But what happens is when they do come, they are so much and they are like everywhere. And then you get so confused, what do I do with them? But that's nature for you. So it takes time for any fruits to mature. And he's saying to us, it also takes time for us humans to mature. The same is true for the fruit of the spirit. And so here we are talking about spirit, which is the biggest reason for this book. It's about us developing spiritually. Um, just walking around without any purpose has no meaning in anybody's life. And the spirit, which in one of the chapters, I try my best to explain how I understand it. It's like taking your clothes off. Take the physical you, this person that you can see that wears the clothes that does the makeup that eats the food and you know runs around and go to work and come back that's the physical you that's the person we see but the person that drives us inside the the thing that we can see that we can feel that we can touch that's our spirit that's the one that when they say somebody is dead or has passed on that's what goes away so it's about developing that part of us not just this physical us because you see some of us will go to university we 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 will not stop going to school until we achieve phd and then doctorate or whatever we're developing the, the physical or we're even developing the mental but that spirit where does it go when it's over do we know what happens and then you start wondering or hearing questions like uh vanity upon vanity so all we want to do is achieve the whole world. 
And there's a passage in the Bible, what will it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his life? Because when that spirit has no fulfillment, all that winning the whole world and, and building castles all over the place and having mansions here and there and traveling everywhere in the world, it means nothing. That becomes vanity upon vanity. So we are here aiming to understand how we can bring peace to our spirit, how we can allow our spirit to be to be genuine, to feel, to be happy, to have joy. That's the big message this book is trying to bring, up, bring to us. And that's why we need to see how we can help ourselves to develop that part of us. Because that is a choice. That's something we take on and say, I want to develop my spirit. It's not something that, you know, a child from the minute they are four years old go to school and then from from that, they finish secondary school, uh, primary school, go to secondary school, secondary school, go to university, go to university, go become this and become that. You have to be a doctor, you have to be a lawyer. You have to, so we're not, this is what society does. It pushes us to do those things. But our spiritual development, no one pushes us. It's something that we have to find a way to deal with it. Because, you know, we've talked about all the suicidal rates going on and the depression going on. All of those things are coming from the spirit. They have nothing. There was this case of this young young boy who went and topped himself and jumped into a river and they said he had this amazing car, he had a family, he had children, he had... So you've got all the physical things that society expects from you. But nobody knows what's happening inside of you. That's where the spirit comes in. We heard of you, remember when we, 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 we heard Robin, Robin, I've forgotten his other name, this huge actor, massive comedy movies he created i watched some mrs Dafire and you just named them and this man went and killed himself that is the spirit so whenever the spirit is down there is nothing you can do about it you have to find a way to lift your spirit up you have to find a way to raise the spirit so he understands what's going on here so you can relate to what's going on here so you can find peace you can find happiness you can you can you can connect with people you can be happy that's where this big message is coming across. To develop us spiritually so we can be strong to deal with everyday life. So, it says the same is true for the fruit of the Spirit. The development of Christ-like character cannot be rushed. So we cannot rush this experience. Spiritual growth, like physical growth, takes time. So, of course, a child is born and then you start feeding this child and feeding this child and feeding this child. You want the child to grow, you want the child to be big, you want the child to be strong. So something happens. We feed the child until we start to grow and grow and grow. So the same thing, if we were thinking, should apply to the spirit as well. How can we feed our spirit so it can grow and be strong? That's what he's trying to tell us here. Spiritual growth, like physical growth, takes time. We need to feed ourselves, feed, you know, spiritually in order to grow to that level where we can say yes we've achieved something on that when we force fruits to ripen quickly it loses its flavor in america tomatoes are usually picked unripened so they won't bruise during so you see he's trying to explain to us again we're looking at the fruits if we force a fruit to ripen quickly we all know that we bought fruits and they don't they don't taste like anything we know like recently i've been buying pineapple and, and mango these are not these are these are tropical fruits but of course here in the west it would be tasteless because from what he said here they bring them unwrapped and so when they are here then they try to force them reason being they don't want them to bruise because obviously if it bruises we it will be useless it will squash and so they bring them strong and, you know, unripened so nothing happens to them. And so he's explaining here, in America, tomatoes are usually picked unripened so they won't bruise during shipping to the stores. So imagine pineapple being brought all the way from Africa to the U UK. Or the same thing with mango. These things don't grow here. And so they bring them unripened. And so then before they are sold, the green tomatoes are sprayed with CO2 gas to turn them red instantly. Do you see the process? They are then sprayed with gas so they can turn red, so they can ripen, because now they're ready to sell them. So the same thing with my pineapple, the same thing with the uh, mango I've been buying. So when they get here, they take them, they spray them, 
and then they get soft and then I buy it and it's tasteless as far as I know absolutely tasteless and so this is what happens when we force something to ripen and that's the same thing with our spirit if we don't feed it constantly and we just imagine that overnight we're going to achieve this greatness and happiness and joy because these are the things that come with the spirit he says we're not getting it right God's tomatoes are edible but they are no match to the flavor of a vine ripened a vine ripened tomatoes that is allowed to mature slowly so when you spray it you can still eat it but it doesn't have any taste compared to the one that the, the one that's been allowed to ripen naturally so while we worry about how fast we grow, God is concerned about how strong we grow. God wants us to grow strong and grow strong spiritually. But we just want to overnight be there. Because I think, to me, I think the message in the world has been lost. All we are after is the physical presence of being here. We're just after the... I realize that all this century or, or how do I put us? The people who we are today, the, the, what we worship is money. That's the real thing. That's the real deal going on here. Especially from Nigeria where I come from. If you haven't got the latest cars and live in the biggest houses and live in the poshest neighborhood, no one reckons with you. You don't count. What you bring out of your head does not matter. And this is why people are forcing themselves to fit in. No one wants to take their time to understand what growing means. Taking on resources, taking on understanding, dealing with life, contributing to society. We're not interested. All we want to do is just have that money, have the purchase cars, live in the purchase neighborhood, and our time here is done, and we go, bye-bye. But that's not what God wanted us to do. While we worry about how fast we grow, God is concerned about how strong we grow. Are we contributing to the society he brought us into? God views our lives from and for eternity. So he is never in a hurry. He wants our life to be for a bigger purpose. Hence, what, what on earth am I here for? Or the purpose-driven life? God has plans for us being here. It's not about just going to acquire money or acquire degrees and certificates and put them all on the wall and feel good about yourself. I have an example, Lane Adams once compared the process of spiritual growth to the strategy the Allies used in World War II to liberate islands in the South Pacific. And so he's going to give us an example. First they will soften up an island, weakening the resistance by shelling the enemy strongholds with bombs from offshore ships. So they will soften up this area that they are ready to attack by sending their bombs from the ship. From the offshore, they are offshore now, but they send the, the, the bombs from there to attack this island. Then next, a small group of marines will invade the island and establish a beachhead. So the next stage is a small group of the marines will now go in and establish a little part of the island. And they call this part the beachhead. A tiny fragment of the island that they would control. So this part they control because they've they've shouted, they've pushed everyone away, and now they've got this part and they're in control of this part. So once the beachhead was secured, they would start the long process of liberating the rest of the island, one bit of a territory at a time. So once they've got this beach hole, this is where they operate from now. So they will now start liberating the rest of the island slowly, slowly. And that's what they did in World War II. He explained that's how they did it but eventually the entire island will be brought under control but not without some costly battles so eventually something will happen they will get control of the island but of course they would have gone through a lot of war adam drew this parallel before christ invades our life at conversion he sometimes has to soften us up by allowing problems we cannot handle does that say something to you? It says a lot to me. By allowing problems we cannot handle. So of course, why, why did I choose to read this book? It all started from there. I was having all kinds of issues going on in my life. And I was beginning to get stressed. And I realized that this was getting out of control. So do you see how it's happening? 
He's allowing problems that I cannot control. So the minute I could not control these problems, I started asking questions. I started wanting to know why this was happening. Why am I experiencing this? While some open their lives to Christ the first time he knocks on the door, most of us are resistant and defensive. So while some of us will quickly, on noticing that something is going out of control because this is a big message we really must get. Because we were not sent on this earth by any other human being. We were sent here by God. God is our creator. And so just like when you buy a microwave and it breaks down, maybe within a short period or you buy a watch and it's not working, what do you do? You take it back to the manufacturer. You go, please, can you look at this thing you bought, I bought from you and look at my receipt and everything. Could you tell me, especially with the phone, phone is a very good example. You return it back to the manufacturer or to the network provider and then they look at what, what's wrong with it and they say, hold on, we'll fix it. You take it back to them. So when you have problems as a human being, your issues should be taken back to God. That's the big message here. So whenever you're having problems, take it to God. Now, what we tend to do as humans, we start looking for our friends and our neighbors and our brothers and our sisters and our, you know, we look for the boss. We look at people. This is something we need to stop doing. We have problem, take it to your creator and say, this is happening to me. I don't know why it's happening, but this is me now. Please talk to me. Help me out. That's what we need to do. Because that spirit in us came from a source. While some open their lives to Christ the first time he knocks on the door, most of us are resistant and defensive. So then we, we, be, we, we start to think that we know what is wrong and we can handle it. Our pre-conversion experience is Jesus saying, Behold, I stand at the door and I'm bombing you. I'm standing at the door and I'm bombing you. Just like this. World War, World War II people. They stand on the offshore and they send the bomb across in order for them to take control of a beachhead. I'm at the door now bombing you. Do something. The moment you open yourself to Christ, God gets a beachhead in your life. So the minute you, you're willing to say, God, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm here now, please. This is happening. I can't control it. Do something. God has taken control of that part of your life. That's how it starts. We may think we have surrendered all our life to him, but the truth is there is a lot to our life that we aren't even aware of. And as usual, if, if, um, if anything is touching your life and this is making a bit of sense, please feel free to shout out to us and say hi, you're there. And if you've experienced anything that's supporting you based on watching this program, we'd like to hear from you. We can only give God as much of us at that moment that we understand. So he's saying to us that there's so much more to our lives that we don't know. There's so much more. But we can only give God what we understand. And that's how it starts. He said, but that's okay too. Once Christ is given a beach hole, a beach head in, in our life, he begins the campaign to take over more and more territory until all of our life is completely his. So he started with that one problem, and then you took it to him, which is the beachhead now. They've got that control of that little island. And then now that they're in, so they start, at, you know, taking on the rest of the island slowly, 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 until they have complete control. That's the same thing with Christ. Once he gets hold, we open the door, and he comes in through the one problem we were experiencing. Now he's ready to start helping us understand the rest of them. And that is so true because when I started this book, I had one, one problem, or maybe two, that I could not understand what was going on. But now, you know, reading this book, there's so much more that's opened up to me that I even had no clue about. And so we need to start learning to work with our spirit and help it to understand the reason we're here. There'll be struggles and battles in different areas of our lives. But the outcome will never be in doubt. So yes, as things begin to open up to you, as God begins to start opening your eyes to areas of your life that you never understood, 
you may want to argue sometimes. You may say, oh no, but I don't think. Don't worry about it. Because in the end, it's always for your own good. God has promised that he who began a good work in us, we carry it on. He will carry that work on to completion. So the minute he got that bitch hold in our life, he's ready to carry on that good work until completion in our lives. Disciples, the discipleship is a process of conforming to Christ. So the minute we, we start allowing God to get control of our life, that's what discipleship means. It means we're listening now. We're ready to walk with God. The Bible says we arrive at real maturity, that measure of development which is meant by the fullness of Christ. So real maturity is when we begin to act and start to behave and start to look, be the part that Jesus Christ was on that. Christ-likeness is our eventual destination, but our journey will last a lifetime. So the journey of starting to work with God will last a lifetime. But Christ-likeness is what we are aiming for. We want to be like Christ. So far we have seen that this journey involves believing through worship. So we believe in God. We accept that yes, He is the owner of our lives. We accept that He is in control of our life. And that's believing. <coughs> we worship Him. And belonging through fellowship. So again, working with other Christians, working with other people who are listening and supporting, people who are believing like us, in a group, in a community, thinking alike, that's fellowship. And becoming through discipleship. Becoming now, responding, taking on. Every day God wants us to become a little more like him. He wants us to become a little more like him every day. We have begun to live the new life in which we are being made new and are becoming like the one who made us. Remember, we call this program a new life. So it's, luckily he even used the word, he said we have become, we have begun to live the new life in which we are being made new. We are being made new. Because now our understanding of our life is changing. And we are becoming like the one who made us, which is God. Today we are obsessed with speed. So he's telling us where we start to go wrong. Because we live in a time when everything has to happen now. Everybody is in a hurry. We just want results right now. What is it? What, where, where are we? Why is it not happening? It should happen now. What cost you not to do it? So speed is of essence right now. And so, but God is more interested in strength and stability than swiftness. So God doesn't just want us to quickly get there. He wants us to have strength in whatever we're doing. And he wants us to be stable. So when we start thinking joy, we start thinking hope, we start thinking happiness. Is it constant in our life? And this is so hard. It's so hard to have that moment where every day, day in day, we're happy. Because I had moments like that. Yesterday I could have been so excited and something was really exciting me and I'm in a great mood. And the next day I wake up and I'm like, okay, what happened yesterday? I can't, I can't remember. But I felt good. So it's like, are we consistent? Are we stable? It's not about the speed of being happy, but it's, is this part of us? Is this how our life has become? We want the quick fix. We want the quick fix. We want the shortcut, the on the spot solution. So all the time we just want it to happen now, on the spot solution, let it be now. We want a sermon, a seminar, an experience that will instantly resolve all our problems. So every time in our life we just and I know this, you go on Facebook and everyone's advertising how you can make money fast because they made it fast and they made it so quickly and it just, overnight, within six months, I was earning five figure. And if you join my seminar, I will give you all the secrets. And so that's just what we want. And then we all pay that money. But you see, what I was reason is, yeah, you, we all pay him that money 
And then what happened? Okay, sorry guys. Um, someone just walked in. So, we want the quick fix. We want the shortcut. We want the on the spot solution. And these are the things that are causing the problem that we're dealing with. Because when we're told that we can make that five figure sum in six months, and then they tell us, come and pay me $200. You are so happy to pay that because you want that solution right now. But what we're not thinking about is if 20 of us pay that $200, that's why this person is making this five-figure sum. Not that I have anything against anyone who wants to make money quick. But do you see how this works? And then when you finish and you go home and you're struggling to make sense of what you learned, it's not working. Because we are, we are in such a hurry, we want it to happen and you're reminding yourself that she made it in six months. And my question is, if they've made it so much in six months, why are they still asking us to come? Why are they still telling you to come and learn how they made it in six months? Why is it? Because consistency is the issue here. So if in one program they made a six-figure song, they can't keep it up. You cannot take a break and say, okay, that's it, I'm done. You want to keep it up. And so this continuously keeping it up is what's causing all of us to not chase the same, how do they call it? We just want to, the dream, the, the dream, we want to achieve that dream. And that's where the problem is. So we're always in a hurry, we want this sermon that will answer it. You go to church, you go one day and you think that one day sermon would have answered your questions. We want a seminar that will happen instantly and the answer is there. We want an experience that, oh my goodness, I, I, I had, um, I, it, it was a miracle and it just, everything happened and it changed. Um, we want things that would take away all the temptations we've been experiencing and we want to, re and it should release us from all the problems so that we can, we can have so much joy. You see, when I took on this book, that was the first thing he told us. He said, it's a 40-day journey. And you're not going to get that answer in one chapter or in two chapters. You have to take the whole long, the, you know, the long haul. That's the same thing in life. When I, when I give people this program, I tell you, you want to go into here, buy this program. It's a 30-pack DVD. It's got all the answers to all the issues you're dealing with. Take your time, practice everything, and you gain all the skills you want. People still think, oh, no. That's not what I was looking for. I wanted, her to, I wanted to walk into the workshop one day and have all the answers. That's not life. When we do that, we, 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 we completely disobey what God is telling us. We see life in a different light. It says, real maturity is not the result of a single experience, no matter how powerful or moving that experience is. That's not maturity. And that's not life. You cannot just buy the one day, one DVD and say, that's it, I've got everything about hair. And then you get people who come here to train as well, and I'm trying to share all the knowledge I've acquired over the years. And sometimes they see me as I'm trying to um, stress them. You're too stressful, you tell me too much. And so now I've learned to hold back some of my knowledge and only give you what you want at the time you want to because um maybe the like it says maturity takes time so take it easy slowly slowly and we'll get there that's why growth is gradual that's what he's telling us growth is gradual so my kind of person i like to share what i have learned over time and and I found out that not everybody is ready to learn. Not everybody. Not everybody is willing to learn from other people's mistakes. That's how I like to put it. Some people, yes, they want to deal with the journey as long as it takes them. Because if I wanted to struggle with life, picking up a book like this has, for me, has shortened the route. Because now I've gotten lots of messages that if I wanted to just sit on, you know, with the Bible day in, day out, reading it, I probably would not have gotten as much as I've got. But at least someone who's taking his time to go through the Bible 
put a book together and then you can connect that with the Bible and it's quick so if you wanted to go into hair and you picked up this and then you start working with it and then you work with clients it all comes together quicker but there are people who say I don't want to hear it leave me alone let me struggle by myself it starts with one experience, then it grows to another, then another. In the previous chapter, he explained, as we, we are like jewels. And so where God wants to shape our character with a hammer to chip off all the rough edges. So the spirit that we have is like jewels. God wants to shape it so it will, it will sit right and be good. And so he starts with the basic hammer to try and knock us. And this hammer becomes the issues we deal with, the problems we're struggling with. If that problem is not strong enough and we don't see anything in it, he uses a sledgehammer. The first one was a chisel hammer. Chisel hammer. And then he then uses a sledgehammer being a stronger, bigger problem. And if that problem still doesn't get our attention, then he comes and he uses a jackhammer. So now that's a bigger problem, a problem now. You are thinking, oh my goodness, how am I going to survive this one? And he says, if we still continue to be stubborn, he will do whatever he has to do to make us wake up. The whole idea is to develop our character. So that we start to behave Christ-like and to draw us nearer our Creator. So when these problems come about our way, it's meant to wake us up so we know where to run to for, for help. And I think it was David that looked up on the, on the hills from whence cometh my help. My help comes from the Lord. So whenever we're in these scenario, scenarios and situations, we need to cry up to God. And in the real life practicality, when you have to deal with anything that you have no clue about, like hair for instance, go to people who've been there, who know about it. Don't sit there and struggle all by yourself. I mean, the one I hear these days, everyone says, well, I can find you on YouTube, no problem. Yes, I am on YouTube. But we want you to invest in yourself. Don't say, I just want quick answers. That's what he's explained to us. We want on the spot results. We don't want to take time to know anything properly. We want it now. We want to follow those people who tell you that they made six figures in three months and then we want that. But they never tell you the whole truth. Because they know you're a fool if you think Somebody made six figures, six figures in three months and you believe it. Then you are the bigger fool. And so bring your money. Let me, let me take it from you so that I continue to make more, more six figures for myself. And then you continue to be more of a fool. The Bible says our lives gradually become brighter and more beautiful as God enters our lives and we become like him. We start to, we start to, you know, like a, like a flower in the garden will start to open up. The more we are becoming more and more like Christ. So now the question is asking is, why does it take so long for us to really understand how to work with God? Although God could instantly transform us, he has chosen to de develop us slowly. Jesus is deliberate in developing his disciples. He doesn't make it overnight because you have to you have to gain understanding of what life is just as god allowed the israelites to take over the promised land little by little so they wouldn't be overwhelmed he prefers to walk in incremental steps in our lives remember how long it took the israelites 